also in your email though, you mentioned something about a water feature. Yeah, it's on our wish list. We've seen some great stone water features we like, uh, but we're not sure if we're able to have one because of water restrictions. Well, first of all, every water feature is going to recycle water, so you're not continuously using new water. Um, just looking at your downspouts over here, I was thinking maybe we could put a bigger basin, so it would be like a rain barrel on steroids, recycle that water, put your water feature in, and then reuse that water on some of the plants in your landscape. What do you think? I love it. All right, in this sequence of your project, that should probably be the first thing we do because we're going to have to dig a pretty good size hole. So let's get started. We have some digging to do. So we're going to start digging out some of these plants so we could transplant for later, um, like this hosta and the ladies' mantle. So we'll go in, dig a nice little root ball around it, and we'll put it on the tarp for later. Sounds good. Okay. You want to get that half and I'll get this half? Nice. All right. This rhododendron is in tough shape and it's too big to dig out by hand, so we'll pull it with the excavator. Nice. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Rhody. Bye, yes. Now we can use the excavator to dig out the hole for the rainwater basin. So, okay. how deep will they go, do you know? He's going to go about two feet deep, if we can. Do we want these rocks out of here? Yes. OK, Kate, the hole is to the correct depth, and it's nice and level. What do you think? I'm really glad we have the excavator. I am, too. It's my favorite tool. Uh, I didn't want you to meet my friend Fred Pape. Uh, he and I worked on a project very similar to this a couple years back. It was a pondless water feature. It was sculpted into the hillside. That water ran down, boulders nestled into the side, and all the water went into this underground basin and recirculated around. We're going to do something very similar to that here. Yeah, it's a very similar setup, except we're going to make the basin much larger because we're capturing that rainwater and reusing it. So you've got the hole just about set. Our next step is to dig a little bit of a pocket for our pump vault which you can see here, that's gonna house the pump. A rubber liner is gonna go in, and then these blocks go in. Sort of looks like a milk crate, but it's actually strong. You can actually drive over these when installed correctly. So when we put all these in and backfill it, we can put the weight of the large stone fountain on top. And then after that is all tucked in and soil back on top, we can do little plantings around it, like ground cover, and put your hostas back in. Let's get to it. Let's do it. All right. So, Kate, okay, we're just going to dig this square out down about eight inches so that the pump vault's recessed to the deepest point. The vault. Yeah, that looks good. Just drape this down in the hole. We'll get it spread out, try to get all as many wrinkles out as we can. So this landscape fabric we're putting down will protect the rubber liner from any roots or rocks from puncturing. Now we can install the rubber liner. It's doubled in size so we can wrap all the way around the blocks all the way to the top. And then we put in one last layer of fabric to protect the rubber liner from the blocks that may puncture it. So here's what we're going to use for your fountains. We found these stones, and it's called a basalt rock. They're actually volcanic rocks. And what the water is going to do, it's going to shoot up the inside and trickle down and glaze the outside. These are beautiful. Yeah, they're very cool. What we need to do now is get them plumbed. So we're going to get some pipe up through that cord just about the top. We'll put an elbow on the bottom, a little pigtail off that that'll go into our plumbing manifold, which comes from the pump. So this is how we tie into the existing downspout of the house. This is our downspout filter to catch debris coming off the roof. The top is our first layer of defense with a layer of gravel. We'll catch the leaves and twigs of larger debris. And then inside of that, we've got our fine mesh net for the smaller de debris. It gets caught there. And then the clean water will come right out this pipe, right into our basin. The 
seems much more stable. All right, guys, let's bring some field sewn in. We'll wrap these a little bit to kind of go about 18 inches off the basalts, space them out irregularly. We don't want a perfect circle, but kind of close them in. So the water features in, what do you think? I love it, it looks amazing. It really does, and we were able to use a lot of your perennials from before to accent the outsides. Great. So it's all set, it actually runs by a remote control. Just wanna hit that button, you can bring it to life. Wow. That looks cool. It's amazing, and that movement of the rainwater is just gonna keep recirculating and add a healthy environment so there's no algae buildup. And not only is it beautiful, it's self-sustaining. By capturing that rainwater off the roof, we're keeping the basin full and giving you extra water that's available for reuse. On the, over on the side, there's a booster pump, which has a hose hooked to it. And you just use that for washing your car, watering the flowers, whatever you might need it for. Fantastic. I can't thank you enough. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having us. It was a really fun project. Absolutely. Absolutely.